Hallelujah. Good evening, good evening, Cousin Marilyn. Thank you for joining tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Amen, amen. Praise him. Bless your name, God. We magnify your name, O oh Lord. You are holy. You are sovereign. You are just. You are the good shepherd, the bishop of our souls. We honor you tonight, O oh God. Praise your name, praise your name. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I pray that you're having a wonderful day and enjoying this weather. I see we finally got some good weather today. They decided to come our way. Thanks to the Lord from whom all blessings flow. Hallelujah. I'm going to start at uh, 6.05. Just give it a couple of minutes. Then we're going to get started. God bless you. Thank you for joining, LaShonda. Praise the Lord. This has been a great day. Wonderful day. God is so good. His mercy endures forever. Just keeps on doing great things for us. You know, I just thank God for this uh, Resurrection Sunday we just had. It was wonderful. Awesome service. Great word came from our shepherd, Pastor Anderson. And God just really just moving in this season in our lives to to keep us encouraged in the midst of discouragement. There's so much going on around us, but when you know that the Lord is on your side, it doesn't matter what goes on around you. You can still stay in the mind of peace because the Lord is on our side. And that's great news, great news. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. The Bible says where there's two or three gathered in his name, he will be in the midst of us. And tonight we have two people and I make three. So God is in our midst and we're going to go ahead and proceed with our, our study for tonight. Uh, the battlefield of the mind. I'm, I'm enjoying the, the knowledge that's coming from the book. Uh, produced by our, uh, Dr. Joyce Myers. And it's a very powerful book because it has a great revelation and insight to help us grow in our walk with the Lord and to stay on track no matter what comes against us, to keep standing with the full arm of God in our minds because our mind is the, the greatest thing the enemy uses against us 
And many times people don't don't really pay attention to how your thought life is controlled. I was sitting here thinking earlier, the Lord said, our mind is a deadly weapon against ourselves. It must be brought under the control of the Holy Spirit in order to be, to be set free and remain free. And that is a profound statement when you think about it. Our minds control our entire destiny. It controls our entire life because as a person thinks what they're going to do, good, bad, prosper, or be a failure, successful, or lack of success, your mind, it controls how the outcome is going to be in your life. And it's up to you to recognize that your mind, as they say, is, is, is something is a terrible thing to waste. And we got to get to the place where we see God in the midst of of everything that we think in our minds says, God bless you, sis, Mary, and our mom. I, I, I hear you on tonight, too. I pray God continues to just enrich you and heal you in your condition. Keep the faith. Don't give up. Keep standing on the word of God because God is in control. And he knows that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. It doesn't matter what the doctor reports are. God's word, it trumps anything the doctor says because he is the finality of our lives and everything about us is in his hand. So I'm going to start with the devotion for today. It says, Lord, today I'm here to worship you in spirit and in truth. I come humbly as I know how, worshiping your holy name. Oh, Father, you are so worthy to be praised. Father, as I come, I ask you to strengthen me mentally enabling me to walk hand in hand with you, Father. I want to have the kind of communication I have only with my BFF, best friend forever. Yes, Lord, you are my BFF, and no one can come before you, Father. I want to have a closer walk with you, Lord. Satan, get behind me. I have an amazing Father who is holy. He he can and he and will win the battle for me each and every time as long as I walk with more of you, God. You know, and that is so, so, so awesome to know that we we can't find a friend in anybody else. We have a friend in the Lord who, who is our BFF, who, who promises to be right there with us forever. And never leave us, nor forsake us, nor turn his back on us. But we can have an assurance every day of our life that God is fighting the battle on, on our side, that we win in, in his victory every day of our lives. So, Father, we thank you tonight for this opportunity to study your word. We pray, Father, that something be said or done that will inspire, edify, and build us up in our faith to trust you, to grow in grace and the knowledge of who you are, that we, Father God, mature in the things of God, that the wisdom of God will be poured into our hearts, the knowledge of God from the word of God will give us, Father God, revelation to begin to see ourselves in the mirror of the word, to begin to change the way we think, that our lives and our actions will line up with your word, that everything we do, we do to the glory of God. And we pray for every person that has joined in tonight, Father God, that you bless them and continue to enrich them with your presence, God, tonight. And let your anointing fall afresh upon them to heal and deliver and set them free in areas of their lives where they need you, Father, the most. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I, I want everyone to keep my mom lifted up. Um, uh, Ruth Emery, she's uh, in the hospital. You know, she had a heart attack over the weekend, and the devil just thought he was going to win this battle, but God already gave her the victory. Every time the enemy tries to attack and take her life, God shows up in the midst to let them know that I'm still in control. I am the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. I'm the Alpha and Omega. And it doesn't matter what you try, Satan, it's not going to work. So we rebuke the adversary every time he come against us, and we command him just as Jesus did. In Luke chapter 4, get thee behind me, Satan. So tonight we're going to go back into our book, The Battlefield of the Mind. 
And I tell you, this is this book is so powerful. I really, really enjoyed it when I read it myself a while ago. And now going through it again, I'm starting to see greater insight from the revelations in this book. Last week, we were discussing about a married couple, John and Mary, who both were uh, victimized by an abusive relationship growing up. And because of that, that abuse, it, it actually uh, brought a damper in their relationship of their marriage. So Mary took the leadership role where the husband should have been the head of the household. And Mary uh, allowed herself to become the one in charge of everything, even handling the discipline of the children, the finances, everything that goes on in a relationship of marriage, she was in charge until God had to show them themselves what was the root cause of the problem in their relationship. So tonight we're going to talk about the way out, and then we're going to go into chapter 2. But first of all, it says in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, it says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, unto him, Get thee behind me, say, that's, that's our verse 8. He says, it is For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall I serve. So when you go down to verse 18, that's chapter, uh, St. Luke chapter 4, verse 8, I just read, but verse 18 and 19, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That is a very powerful scripture you should add to your library. Even in Isaiah chapter one and two, it talks about the same thing. This is a reference scripture that Isaiah prophesied about the Messiah that Jesus was declaring at this time. He was declaring this word about himself. And then what Isaiah prophesied about the Messiah that when he would come, that the Spirit of the Lord God would rest upon him. He would do these supernatural things by the unction of the Holy Spirit that would dwell inside of him to heal the brokenhearted and to, to de bring deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind. And it's talking about, it's not talking about a physical blind, it's talking about the spiritual blindness. And so many folk in the body of Christ are still spiritually blinded because of the way they think. And we got to recognize that whatever thoughts dominate you the most, be it good or bad, you're going to have an outcome, which is a fruit. A fruit is going to come from the action of your thoughts. And your thoughts is going to control and dictate how your life is going to respond to those thoughts. Hey, hey, Aaron, good to see you, sweetheart. God bless you. Your thought life has so much power. And just as Mary and John's relationship, there was so much abuse that happened in their, their mentality as a child to where they grew up, their lives being dictated and governed by that same spirit that held them in captivity. And God wants us to know tonight that you don't have to be bound by the enemy in your thought life. It doesn't matter what it is the enemy put in your mind that you're never going to amount to anything. You're not going to be prosperous. You're going to always be coming up short. Everything never going to work out right for you. You're going to always find yourself uh, 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 wandering and, and, and trying to find your way in life and never know your purpose, never know the plan, the vision God has for your life, never know what you what, what God called you to do because you you allow the enemy to put negativity in your mind and the, the thing that's so dangerous is the way we think about ourselves we project it on our children and our children behavior begin to respond according to the words that come out of our mouth to degrade their credibility to make them think that they're nothing i remember last week i mentioned a statement how so many uh, our parents Tell their children, oh, you're going to be just like your mother. Oh, you're going to be just like your father. You know, you're never going to be anything uh, of, of value in life because, you know, he's a failure, so you're going to be a failure. You know, and that's the thing God wants us to know tonight, that he, he cre created us with a purpose. He created us with a vision. He created us with a plan. He created us with, with an anointing to flow through our lives to bring forth his abilities inside of us. 
but we got to recognize the thought life must be controlled and governed by the Holy Spirit. You cannot control your thought life by yourself. The reason why so many people find themselves in a spiritual prison in their minds where they always see themselves in prison to, to, to the things of the past. I, I've known people that had lost loved ones 30 years later. They're still grieving over the loss of their loved one. Why? Because in their mind, they haven't let it go. So the heart, whatever is in the heart, Jesus said, guard your heart. He said, I have a flow of the issue of life. So whatever is in your heart that you have cherished the most is going to come through your mouth, through your confession. It's going to always line up with whatever is in your heart. And God wants us to know tonight that we must recognize what danger will we put ourselves in every time we hold on to the thoughts of the past. It's nothing wrong with reflecting on the things that passed in your life. But it's a problem when you get stuck reflecting on the things of the past in your life and never advance past it or move forward past those things. The reason why so many people find themselves handicapped in their minds is because they don't know the word of God. They don't know their identity. They don't know who they are in Christ Jesus. They don't know what God has called them to do in such a time as this. So they find themselves stuck. It's like, like in a grave with, with, no, with no way of getting out. You're just buried, just there. And tonight, the way out for no, for no temptation, no trial, regarded as enticing to sin. This is an amplified version. No matter how it comes or where it leads, has overtaken you and laid hold on you that is not common to man. That is, no temptation or trial has come to you that is beyond human resistance. And that is not adjusted and adapted and belonging to the human experience and such as a man can bear. But God is what? Faithful to his word and to his compassionate nature. And he can be trusted not to lead you to be tempted and try and assay beyond your ability and strength of resistance and power to endure. But with the temptation, he will always also provide the way out the means of escape to landing to a landing place that you may be capable and strong and powerful to bear up under the under it patiently now that's in first corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. so god is able to help you overcome your temptation in the king james let me go there right quick it reads it as like this. In the King James, it says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. And what he's talking about, the thing that you're familiar with, the things that you have, have been through, the things that you've seen before in your life as an event or something that happened in your life before, he said, this is a common thing. This is nothing not, not common that you can't even overcome. Because God already knew that certain things in our lives we're going to be tempted with, we're going to be tried, we're going to be tested. But in the midst of it all, he also provided the remedy. It says, but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So what is your temptation? What is your struggle? What is your habit? What's holding you in prison? What's putting you in captivity? What is it that's leading you away from the Lord and causing you to be in bondage? Think about it. We all have something in our life that does not bring God glory. If you take a look in the mirror, you're going to see yourself. And when you see yourself, yourself is going to remind you that something in your life is not right. It might be a defect in the way you look. It might be the way you think about yourself, the way you feel about yourself, the way you feel like you never measure up to God's standard, the way you might feel like you'll never be able to change certain habits in your life. We all have habits and addictions that does not bring God glory. And God says tonight, you got to allow your mind to be controlled, dictate, governed, driven, led 
by the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome the temptation. That's why it says, it's nothing God would allow you to be tempted up beyond what you can bear. He knows what we can bear. He knows what we're capable of overcoming. But do you know what you can overcome? That's a question. Do you know what it is that tempt you the most? Do you know what it is that causes you to fall into temptation? That causes you to fall back into a place of bondage or captivity? You have to recognize in yourself and be honest with yourself. Don't lie and deceive yourself because we deceive ourselves every time we deny we have a problem. It might be drinking problem. It might be a drug problem. It might be a sexual problem. It doesn't matter what that problem is. It's something internal that's controlling your thought life to make you behave in an unseemly way that God is not pleased. So as it says in our book, this is, I hope you see from this parable type example how Satan takes our circumstances and builds strongholds in our lives. How he wages war on the battlefield of the mind. But thank God we have weapons to tear down the strongholds. Do you know what your weapons are? Do you, do you use your weapons? Are your weapons just sitting in a treasure chest just staying there and just being uh, uh, dormant? When God gave us his word in Ephesians chapter 6, he gave us the weapons that we need to defeat the adversary in our lives. But the problem comes in when we don't take those weapons literally, we put them on the shelf, we hide them in the closet, we put them in a chest, and we just disregard them and don't even think about it no more. And God is saying, I gave you the tools. I gave you the knowledge. I gave you the insight on how to defeat the temptation, the strongholds that Satan wages in your mind. But the problem comes in when you don't know how to use your weapons. And the only way you're going to learn how to use your weapons is by getting into the word of God and applying the word of God to your thought life. God doesn't abandon us and leave us helpless. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 promises, promises us that God would not allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear. But with every temptation, he will also provide the way out, the escape. And one of, one of us may be Mary or John. I'm sure the most, that most of us relate in some way to this scenario. Their problems are internal and, and their thoughts and their attitudes. So check this out. So your thoughts and your attitudes come from an internal condition. So the more you feed your mind on things that are of the world, things that does not bring God glory or praise to God, or things that lead you to temptation or tempts you and tries you and tests you, the internal behavior responds according to the thought life. And what goes into the thought life comes out of the mouth. Jesus puts it this way. He says, not what goes into a man that corrupts him or defiles him or messes him up, but it's what comes out of you that causes you to be corrupt. And you got to be aware of what are you feeding in your mind? What is it you allow the enemy to put in your thought life? What is it that's taking you away from the Lord's safety and his security and his, his plan and his purpose that he established for your life and the pathway he's chosen you to walk in? What is it that's leading you away from Christ? You know, and, and that's one thing about it. I'm, I'm not ashamed to say there's some things that I, I had in my thought life. That was leading me away from the Lord. Pornography and, and, and uh, uh, drinking and all this stuff at one point in my life to where the enemy tempted me so much because that's something I lived most of my life hiding behind. You hear what I said? Hiding behind. And it's a false security when you're hiding behind your comfort zone. When you hide behind the stuff that you've been delivered from. I was reading in Colossians this morning how Paul was talking to the church at Colossae and he was telling them, he says, you know what? You've been delivered from the things of the world. And he says, and you've been risen with Christ. 
And he says that you've been brought to a higher standard, a higher place in Christ Jesus. Jesus says, so therefore, in, in uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 5, it says, mortify. That means put to death. Therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affections, evil concussions, and co covetedness, and idolatry. Said for which things sake, said for which things sake, the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience, and in which ye once also walked sometime when ye lived in them. So he names all these different things that are common to human nature, and then he makes it clear that if you continue to walk in these things in disobedience, he says the judgment or the punishment of God comes upon the person that keeps doing those things. He said, you were sometimes like this. Now walk in Christ. You've been liberated. You've been set free. And this is a very powerful message that people don't want to hear. People don't like this kind of teaching because it challenges you to check yourself or wreck yourself. And the enemy knows that if you stay in a place of bondage, he can keep you secure out of the plan of God. But one thing about God, thank God for Jesus, for Resurrection Sunday. Resurrection Sunday brought us the remedy to overcome every stronghold in our lives, to defeat the adversary by the power of the word of God. And the devil is a liar. The devil cannot stop you from overcoming what God has for you to endure in his will, in his plan, his purpose he has for your life. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, verse 7. Proverbs 23, verse 7. It says, this is one of the scriptures along. The lessons know how very important it is, it is that we think properly. Thoughts are powerful. According to the writer of the book of Proverbs, they have creative ability. Your thought life has creative ability. Your thought life has creative ability. If our thought life are going to affect what we become, then it is certainly to be prior prioritized that we think right thoughts. Your thought life are very powerful. Your thought life can be destructive or can be life-giving. And the thing about you is you got to choose. You must choose how your thought life it's going to guide your life. Is your thought life going to guide you in the way of righteousness and truth? Or is your thought life going to be dictated and governed by the enemy to a place of defeat and failure? It's up to you to think positive thoughts because you have to prioritize your thoughts. What is the most important thing on your thought when you get up in the morning? Many people, when they wake up in the morning, the first thing they want to do is get something to eat. That's out of prioritize. If you're not properly organizing your thoughts, when you get up in the morning, that's, that's an out of order thought life because the first thing comes to your mind, you want to eat some physical food instead of giving God thanks. God wants to be at the top list of your priorities. He wants to be at the, the head of your list that when you get up in the morning, the first thing I want to do is give God the praise, give him the thanks, for allowing me to wake up this morning, to be closed in my right mind, to give him the acclimates that do his name. That's what God wants. So you got to get your thought life in order. I want to impress on you the absolute necessity of getting your thinking lined with God's word. You cannot have a positive life and a negative mind. You cannot have a positive life and a negative mind. You have to make a choice. The mind of the flesh versus the mind of the spirit. In Romans chapter 8 verse 5. We go here in my Bible. Romans chapter 8 verse 5. There's some powerful scriptures. And if you're taking notes, write these scriptures down because these are scriptures you can apply to your life. It says, for those, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. 
but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Verse 6 goes on and says, for to be carnally minded, that means worldly minded, fleshly minded, is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So you have to make a choice. When I get up in the morning, am I going to have a positive life out, outcome on today? Or am I going to be driven by a negative mindset? You have to make a decision within yourself that, you know, when I get up in the morning, first thing I want to do is thank God. Second, I'm going to ask him to guide me. Be my leader for the day. Let his will be done in my life. And then whatever else prioritize come, out, prioritize come after that. So you have to make that choice. So in the Amplified, it says, for those who are according to the flesh are controlled by its unholy desires, set their minds on and pursue those things which gratify the flesh. But those who are according to the spirit are controlled by the desires of the spirit set their minds on and seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. So it's very important that you recognize that I must be controlled, governed, led, driven, guided by the Holy Spirit and not the flesh. Because the flesh is going to bring you to a place of a downfall. Then she said to the book, let me put it in another way. If we think fleshly thoughts, wrong thoughts, negative thoughts, we cannot walk in the spirit. Renewed God-like thinking is a vital necessity to a successful Christian life. That is so powerful. A very profound statement. If we think fleshly thoughts, wrong thoughts, negative thoughts, we cannot walk in the spirit because you cannot walk in darkness and light at the same time. Try going into a dark room and try to turn on a light and see if the darkness is going to stay there. It's the same way it is in your life today. We have Christ live on the inside of us, which is light. Darkness comes along to put out the light. And God says, either going to be light or going to be darkness. You're going to be righteous or unrighteous. And you have to make a choice that the life that I live, I'm going to let the Holy Spirit guide me with the light of truth, or I'm going to put out the light and let the darkness control me with the light of, with the way of darkness. And that's exactly what happens. Many times, we don't allow our minds to be renewed by the word of God, so the enemy comes into your thought life, gives you his thoughts for the day, and when you get up, you're miserable, you're bitter, you're angry, you're frustrated, because you tossed and turned all night long. You didn't get no rest. So because you're miserable, that same negative energy that's being projected in you comes out of you. So when you meet other people, you project that same negative spirit, that foul demonic spirit towards somebody else and cause them to have an upset day. And we got to be careful what we allow to get into our minds and come out of us. There are times when we humans will be lazy about something if we don't realize how important it is to pay attention to it. There are times when we humans will be lazy about something if we don't realize how important it is to pay attention to it. But when we realize it is a matter that will cause a great problem if we ignore it, then we take actions. And that is so true. Because many times we know we got something important to do, we put it off for later. Or oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Just like if you got a bill, you know that bill is due tomorrow, and you know you can pay it today. You say, no, I just wait till tomorrow and pay that bill. Then tomorrow comes, all of a sudden something happens to distract you from that on that day, and you forget all about that bill for the pay. So then when they tack a late fee on it, now you're mad. Because you didn't pay the bill on time. We do God the same way. When God is trying to warn us about situations in our lives that's vital to our spiritual growth, the things that we might be doing or people we might be hanging around, 
we put up a blocker to uh, being distracted and we, we tell God, oh, I'll deal with that later. Uh, I, I know God, but this is my friend. This is my friend for 30 years, 40 years. I can't let this friend go, God. I know they're not walking with you, God. I know they're not, not uh, praising. I know they're not living their life for you, God. But, but God, that's my friend. Jesus puts it this way. When the people came to him on one occasion and said, Lord, your mother, your brother, they're looking for you. He said, my family, they do the will of my father. If you're not doing the will of God, they can't be your true friend. They can't be your, your real family member if they're not walking according to the word of God. And it's in the book. You got to recognize how important it is to guard your spirit around certain people. If you know a person coming around you always cursing, every word come out of their mouth is fouling the money. You have to guard your spirit from that type of behavior. Because that same unclean spirit, hear what I said, that unclean spirit that's in them will attach itself to your mindset. And before you know it, something happens out the north, you cuss it. Because you've been around a person who curse all the time. You have to guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. You have to guard your thought life, be renewed daily in the spirit of your mind by the word of God. So let us say, for an example, that the bank calls and tells us that your account is overdrawn by $850. You immediately look for the problem. Perhaps you, in your search, you discover that you failed to make the, a deposit that you thought you had made. You rush to the bank right away with the deposit so you won't have any further problems. I would like for you to consider this matter of getting the mind renewed in the same manner. So when it says your life may be in a state of chaos because of years of wrong thinking. Your life may be in a state of chaos or confusion because of years of entertaining wrong thinking. If so, it is important for you to come to grips with the fact that your life will not get straightened and out until your mind does. If we don't put our minds in the right order, on the right platform, back on Christ where it needs to be, we can have years and years of wrong thinking that causes us to be prevented from receiving the promises God has for our lives or in, enter into the plan God has for you to prosper you. So those wrong thinkings, that thought life have governed and dictated you so long and it caused you to miss out on what God had been trying to show you for a long time that if you do this certain thing, I can cause your whole life to be set forever. But because of the thought life has not been governed by the spirit, we're walking in the flesh and the flesh destroys your future until God comes into place and says, you know what? I see where you had it. It's a place of destruction, but I'm going to change your thinking because now I got your attention by allowing something to happen to you to draw your attention back to me. Now I can give you the word from the Holy Spirit, from the word of God that will change your thinking to begin to realign your mindset, straighten out your thought life back with the word of God. And when God began to change your thinking, everything else began to fall in place like a puzzle. You should consider this area of one of a vital necessity. Be serious about tearing down the stronghold Satan has built in your mind. You must be serious. You got to be serious. You got to be real with yourself. Recognize that until I overcome the strongholds in my mind, my habits and my addictions will never change. My lifestyle will never change until I recognize what is the root problem in my life, the reason why my life goes the way it has been for so long. Use your weapons. Use your weapons. Use your weapons. The word, the praise, and prayer. You got to use the word of God by the Spirit. 
I'm on page 20 in the book, if you follow me along with the book. And it says, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. One of the best aids to freedom is asking God for a lot of help and asking often. One of the best aids to our freedom is coming to the place of realizing I can't fix my problem on my own. I can't change my thinking by myself. I can't change this habit of addiction in my life by myself. So I got to go to the source, God. Ask God for help and keep on asking him until it happens, until it manifests in your life. One of your weapons is prayer, asking. You can't overcome your situation by determination alone. How many times have you been in a situation and you tried to change that thing over and over and over to get out of certain problems, certain certain uh, 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 things you got yourself entrapped in. And you say, I'm determined, I'm going to get out of this. I'm determined, I'm going to fix this problem. I'm determined, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And, and you just keep on being determined, but you always end up failing, never accomplishing anything. But the key is, anything in your life that has a control or stronghold in your life is to recognize, I need to pray. When I seek God's face and I tell God all about my problems, turn it over to the Lord, he'll work it out. When you turn it over to the Lord, say, Lord, you know, God, I've been thinking wrong for a long time. Lord, you know, I got this problem that I, I can't seem to fix. Lord, I've been doing this thing in my life that's not pleasing to you, God, for so long. And I'm tired, God, and I don't know what to do anymore. I can deal with what I know to do. Everything I try, I keep failing. But now I realize, God, without you, I can do what? Nothing. But with God, all things are possible to him that believe it. So you come to God, say, Lord, I need your help. And you, you tell God that I'm going to place all my cares, my concerns, my habits, my addictions, my problems, I'm going to put them in your hand. I'm going to trust you at your word and allow your word to bring me through this thing victoriously. The Holy Spirit is your helper. Seek his help. Lean on him because you can't make it alone. The Holy Spirit on the inside of you and me has the ability. He has the strategy. He knows exactly how to overcome certain things in our life that we can't fix on our own. So we recognize, okay, Lord, I thank you for giving me the comforter. Because the comforter, when Jesus told the disciples when he's going to leave, he said, I'm going to send you another comforter. Because I'm not going to leave you alone. He said, but the comforter, when he comes, he's going to guide you in all truth. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, and 6 through 8. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 8. It says this, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the God of peace, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 8. So you got to have healthy thought life in order to overcome anything the enemy brings your way by yielding surrendering and releasing yourself into the hand of God and allow him to change your think, your thought life, your thinking to become more fruitful and abundant into the way he has, has created you to be according to his will. 
a vital necessity. A vital necessity. Page 20. For the believer, right thinking is a vital necessity. A vital necessity is something that is so important that one simply cannot live without it. Like a heartbeat is vital or blood pressure is vital. These are things with, without which there is no life. So think about it. If your body cannot function without a heartbeat, if your body cannot function or live without a blood pressure, how do you expect to live a spiritual life without a healthy thinking? Think about it. How can you have a healthy life without a healthy thought life? Just like people go to the gym and they do bodybuilding, they do Pilates, they do Zumba, all these different exercises to do what? To build the external man. Bali, it's a Bali exercise profit little, but godliness is a great game. So you do everything to build the external up. But if your thought life even in that, it's not thinking healthy, it's to no avail. Because you're not going to produce any, any good results from working out. It's just, just wasting time. Until you apply your mind. When you apply your mind to the, to the facet of knowing that, hey, I'm going to this gym. I'm going to hit it hard. I'm going to lose this weight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build my muscles. I'm going to build my stamina. I'm going to build my strength. I'm going to deal with my perseverance. I'm going to do all these different things when I go in this gym. Why? Because you thought about it. Before you got to the gym, you put in your mindset what you're going to do when you get to the gym. When I used to work out consistently, I worked out for three years consistently. And every time I went to the gym, I had in my mind what I was going to do before I got there. Then I knew what I needed to do, what exercises to do, what type of strengthening uh, equipment I needed to build certain areas of my body. And I did exactly what I wanted to do and applied it to my, my mindset and applied it to my actions. So if you don't apply your thought life to your actions, it's to no avail. So whatever it is become very important to you is what's going to control your thought life and your outcome is going to be whatever you put in your mind. So the Lord impressed his, this truth on us years ago concerning personal fellowship with him in prayer and the word. He says, I was having a terrible time dis disciplining myself to do these things until he showed me that they are vital necessity. Just as my physical life depends upon the vital signs, so spiritual life depends upon spending regular quality time with God. I love that statement. Just like the physical life depends upon the vital signs, the spiritual life depends upon the spiritual quality time that we spend with God. Once I learned that fellowship with him is vital, I gave it priority in my life. In the same way, once I realized that right thinking is vital to a victorious living, I got more serious about thinking about what I was thinking about. I love that statement. When you realize the vital necessity of spending time in prayer, spending time in worship, spending time talking to God, seeking God's face, how important it is to your spiritual life, then you will become serious, more serious about thinking about what you're thinking about and choosing your thoughts carefully. So we got to pay attention to the warning signs because a lot of times the Holy Spirit will give you warning signs. When something's not right with your thought life, the Holy Spirit will tell you, hey, you're not thinking healthy thoughts today. You, you're being negative today. You're allowing uh, your heart to be distorted. 
you allow confusion in your mind. The Holy Spirit will tell you these things. You're making yourself sick because anxiety in the heart of a man weighs you down. So, and a broken spirit drives up your bones. So, the Holy Spirit tells you, you got to pay attention. What do you put in your mind? It's time to manifest. Shut it down. St. John chapter 8, verse 32. St. John chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? Talking about Jesus Christ. When he rose from the dead, delivered us from the power of darkness and translated Translate, translate means to be taken out of one place to another. So we, we're taken from darkness, brought into the kingdom of his dear son by the power of the resurrection. So you got to recognize that my thought life is governed how I think what I allow to come into my life. Either I'm going to allow the spirit of God to lead and guide and direct me, or I'm going to be governed by my own way of thinking, which is going to eventually destroy me. As you think, so are you. Either make a tree sound healthy and good, and its fruit sound healthy and good, or make the tree rotten, diseased, and bad, and its fruit rotten, diseased, and bad. For there, for, for the tree is known by known and recognized and judged by its fruit. So either make the tree sound healthy and good, and this fruit sound healthy and good, or make the tree rotten and diseased and bad, and this fruit rotten and diseased and bad, for the tree is known and recognized and judged by its fruits. Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. It, it said the Bible says that a tree is known by its fruits. And that is a true statement. If you are a pleasant, peaceful, loving, caring person, and you never even say a word about that about yourself, other people will attest about you who you are, who come around you, because what's on the inside of you is going to reflect on the outside of who you are. It's like a mirror. It's going to show a reflection of what's really inside of you. If you're a person that's manipulator and deceiver, and a person always cunning and conniving, guess what happens? It's going to reflect through the mirror of what you really are to other people. No matter how you try to hide your true identity, every tree is known by its fruit. Either rotten and bad disease fruit on that tree or healthy and good fruit is on that tree. Because what's inside of you is going to come out of you. The same is true in our lives. Thoughts bear fruit. Think good thoughts, and the fruit of in your life will be good. Think good thoughts, and the fruit in your life will be good. Think bad thoughts, and the fruit in your life will be bad. Actually, you can look at a person's attitude and know what kind of thinking is prevalent in his life. A sweet, kind person does not have a mean, vindictive thought. A sweet, kind person does not have a mean, vindictive thoughts. By the same token, a truly evil person does not have good loving thoughts. So think about it. If you're a person who's always mean, no matter what people do, you always reflect a mean streak about yourself. That means you're not walking in love of God. You're not walking in the spirit. You're allowing the enemy to di dictate to you what your thought life is going to be and what's going to come out of you. So you got to control what, you, what type of behavior you're going to allow to come out of you. Remember Proverbs 20, 23rd chapter verse 7. Proverbs 23 verse 7 says, And allow it to have an impact in your life. For as you think in your heart, so are you. I frequently say, where the mind goes, the man follows. 
Where the mind goes, the man follows. That's the end of chapter two in our book. So think about what we talked about tonight. Begin to go back in your mind. Look at the scriptures. If you don't have the book, get the book. And begin to read that book. Meditate on that book. Allow that book to get in your spirit. God bless you, Auntie. Allow that book to get in your spirit. And allow the Holy Spirit to begin to speak to you by divine interpretation from the heart of God. And I guarantee you'll begin to see the changes in your lifestyle, in your behavior, and in your mindset. Once your mind is changed, your tree begins to produce good fruit. But if your mind is corrupt and warped, you're going to always have a negative outcome, a demonic outcome, and an unfruitful, healthy thought life. So, Father, we thank you tonight for this lesson. I pray, Lord God, that you speak by divine interpretation. Continue in our minds as we, Father God, rest tonight. Let this become a record in our mind to play over and over how we need to be uh, aware of what we allow to come out of our mouths, oh God, what we put into our minds and, in our, and it comes into our heart. But that we would guard our hearts and our minds by Christ Jesus and know, Father God, that without you, we can do nothing. We're vulnerable. We're helpless. We're defenseless without you. But we know that when the Holy Spirit takes control, he leads us in the pathway of righteousness and truth that we begin to produce good fruit from out of the abundance of our heart. And we stand firm in the faith of Jesus Christ that he would guide and lead us in the way of we have ordained for us to be, O oh God, to be effective in the kingdom of God against the kingdom of darkness. And I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or you might need to rededicate your life to the Lord because you might have strayed away, backslidden, as they call it, I want you to repeat this prayer out to me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, your word says, that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for my sins, was buried in the grave, and on the third day rise again to bring us redemption. And I ask you now, Lord, to forgive me for my sins, knowingly and unknowingly. Come into my heart, wash me clean with the blood of the Lamb, and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you in Jesus' name, Amen. Now, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit and that with power to be a witness for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. The whole host of heavens rejoicing with one sinner as it came to the Lord than over the 99 that he already have in his care. And then, as always, if you choose to sow a seed into this ministry, feel free to do so. I'm posting the information right now. Whatever God put in your heart to do, and expect God to bless you in return. And I guarantee that when you walk by faith, sowing seeds into the kingdom of God, any way God chooses, God's going to rain on that seed and cause you to have a harvest in return according to your faith be it done unto you. You got to have an expectation when you give, trust God in his word, and know that no matter what it is you need God to do in your life, that God will do it. He will bring it back to you hundredfold plus that you will live and abide in the overflow. So, Father, I thank you, Lord God, for those who may be touched by your spirit, Lord, to give a seed, Father God, to this ministry, that you, Father God, will rain upon them a hundredfold blessing in return, O oh God that they would live in the overflow, that their vats, as your word says, Father God, will be filled in their barns with plenty, O oh God. And we thank you that the thief cannot steal this seed, but that, Father God, you will produce a harvest in return. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to thank everyone for tuning in tonight. And may the Lord continue to bless you and enrich you and empower you in this word. Get into the word of God and allow the word of God to get inside of you. And remember that your thought life is very vital to your spiritual growth. And allow the spirit of God to bring that change in your life forever. God bless you. Until next week, share this video with somebody else. 
and sh share up with others. Let them know that we're on every Tuesday at 6 o'clock p.m. Until next week, shalom, peace be unto you, and God bless.